Hey guys, um, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at this monster ash tree that I managed to acquire from my neighbour's garden. Um, very nicely let me dig that up as a sort of urban dory, yamadori strikes again. So as you can see, this is an absolute beast of a tree. I will, um, in due course, I will show you how I came about this tree, where it was located, how I found it, um, what it looked like before because it looked nothing like this, and then I will show you me digging it out and getting it ready and how to prepare this part and, and how you two could do something like this. Things I want to mention before we get into this, um, I did actually manage to pluck up the courage to ask my neighbour permission to dig this tree out so I didn't just go and pinch it um, and if you're going to do something like this make sure that you do get permission. Dig around the roots in a circular fashion, cut any thick ones that you can see, leave as many feeder roots as you can possibly um, leave and then stick it in a pot with good drainage and a variety of soils depending on just quickly google what kind of soils your particular tree likes and then leave it to settle down basically i'm really really happy with this tree i think it looks absolutely awesome kind of taking inspiration from sort of like the deathly hallows or some sort of harry potter type fantasy woodland um tree that this is this has become um so you will have to bear with me a little bit on this video this took me about three or four days to actually get out of the ground um, partly because my health but partly because where it was situated in my neighbor's garden the gardener just cut it hard back every year um, it was just sort of a pest ash tree very common um, and it was never ever gonna survive or thrive there sorry it was only just surviving so now it's with me i've really enjoyed this video I hope that you guys do too. Drop a like, leave me a comment, and uh, let me know what you think of this monster, Deathly Hallows ash tree bonsai. Hello mate, how are you? I'm here to show you. Um, I just had to be a brave boy and um, go next door to ask my neighbour if I could dig this tree out of her. This is our house and this is technically her land, so I thought I'd ask it's just an ash tree so it's nothing crazy but it's been here for about 15 to 20 years and it's developed this real thick nabari naturally it's got a hollow inside the middle of the trunk as well looks really cool um loads of growth on it obviously it needs wiring and trimming um but she basically gave me the go ahead today to dig it out
So as you can tell, guys, here's a first look at this beast. It is just, that trunk is so much bigger than I thought it would be. Um, I managed to get quite a few feeder roots there. But this thing is absolutely enormous and I don't think that that's enough root to support all of this. So I'm gonna have to make quite a few, uh, quite a few difficult choices and try and get as rid of as much of this foliage as possible not foliage you know what i mean branches as possible um so that this tree has the best chance of surviving uh as you guys know this was the front um when it was in the ground because i could see this hollow and i imagined a sort of turtle back maple style um, but since taking out of the ground and realizing how much trunk we've actually got to work with here, I'm definitely going to be changing the front. Um, so as I just had it a minute ago, I thought this was a nice, it's quite a nice lean. It's quite bulbous though, and it doesn't have very much taper. Um, so it's difficult. Obviously this big root, I'm going to have to saw off. Um, let's have a look at other possibilities. So this as a front is quite unique um, because obviously this would be the soil line and you could have this coming up again, it's very bulbous. But um, if you look at it from a standing position, the hollow itself is actually sort of like a highlighted main feature. And I quite like this front because if you imagine without all of that, um, you know, without, without all of this section, you can see the hollow itself almost protected by this ring around it. And I think that that's quite cool. Um, so because it's gonna be in a training pot for the next few years, I think I'm gonna leave my options open. And uh, I think I've just made my mind up. I'll go with this as a front, um, knowing that there is a really nice back position as well. Um, so I'll get on with that and I'll get back to you in a minute. straight down into the ground. Whoa. That's massive. He said when I come in you can have a cup of tea. So let's get down a bit. Here's a better look at um, the intended front. Look how thick that trunk is. That's absolutely insane. So that's how I see it being potted up. Um, I'll stick you guys on a time lapse again, just whilst I decide what branches I'm going to remove. Uh, like I said, this is way too much branch structure uh, to support the amount of roots that I have. So I'm going to take away the ones that are spoiling um, the view of the front. Um, there will be lots of cut wounds and stuff. But I'll seal them all at the end, so don't worry about that too much. Um, yeah, so I'll pop you on a time lapse again. Okay, so next stage I'll tell you what I've done, why I've done it. Um, so we've got this still as our initial front. I'll probably actually get rid of this one. Um, but I, what I want you to imagine, let's get down low, is that here we have our future apex. Um, you have to ignore that. So you get a better idea from around this side. So this is obviously the tree, the growth that the tree has put out um, and this is due to come out in the spring um, in a few weeks. So I've left one long shoot to leaf out as normal. Um, I have no scientific reasoning behind this, but I do think that it will help the tree because um, I don't know, I think in my head, I just think that um, 
if left to its own devices, this is where the energy is going to come out. So I may as well have at least one. It can leaf out, um, make lots of nice healthy leaves, absorb loads of light and energy, and in turn it has a better chance of surviving. So that's that's why I do that. Um, so this is obviously, as you're looking at it now, ignore the mess behind. Um, this will be the right hand side of the tree. Now, as you saw, I did take quite a lot off. This is very congested and quite a mess, but until I can confirm that it has survived, I want to keep a branch at the back that I can twist and uh, make into something nice. Um, I don't like all of this congestion in here, but there is quite some cool features. And so looking at it from the front, I love, I absolutely love all this gnarled, um, obviously the taper and stuff isn't good, but you know what? It, nature isn't always perfect. You've got this lovely dead wood back here. No, that one. Um, you've got lo lovely bits of dead stuff everywhere, um, natural. This is right in the way of the front, but ash, even as, um, even as it becomes mature, is still very pliable. So I know that I can bend that around if I wish. So I'm gonna keep that for now. Um, I'm going to keep this congestion because I just think it looks wicked. Um, so yeah, we've got trying. I'm trying to keep it balanced out. I think it's a bit too thick up here, but like I said, I would get. I wouldn't. I can't get rid of that yet because it's leading to this bit of growth that I need. I need that on there. Um, what else did I want to tell you before I put it back up on the table? Um, I think that's about it. I'm just. Um, I just love this tree. I absolutely love it. It's very quickly becoming my favourite. Um, and I can't wait to show you guys what we're going to do next. That's actually a pretty good fit. Um, so the front is kind of here facing you guys now. Um, so I'm just going to... A bit of a better height. What, what can you guys see here? Hmm, not brilliant. Let me change that. There we are. So now you guys are seeing a bit more what I'm seeing. Um, so fits in this pot that I've selected, pot, basket type thing that I've selected out. Fits in there perfectly. Um, I am going to add some more drainage and mound some earth underneath. Uh, so that's just an initial look at what we've got. See again that. This is so mature, but yeah, it can still be bent right around there. So I'm gonna keep it just in case I wanna do something like that to it in the future. This tree is so gnarled up. I, I just love it, I absolutely love it. It's perfect. It's so much better than I thought it was gonna be. And I thought it was gonna be good, you know? So um, I'm well happy with this. I, um, again, here I've kept these, but only because, imagine there. There you go, so you kind of see what I'm seeing in my head now. I've got a picture of this. I don't like this. I don't think anything good is ever going to come of that. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. I'll be right back. There we are. I think that's a bit better. So I'll pop the tree a little bit more that way. It just, it, to me, it looks like something out bloody Deathly Hallows or something, don't you think? Um, I want to keep this dead bit at the back. Um, this is going to be our apex. This will be cut down. Uh, in the future. What I'm going to do now, guys, I'm actually going to show you some of the things I can see with my eyes from here and that maybe you guys can't quite see from your view. So here, this is this is sort of how I'm seeing it. Um, again, that one can be bent down. This one can be bent back. So, oh, no, come back. Stay there, please. Um, so in here, it's all like gnarled up and ignore this for a second and in here look at that this is the hollow that i noticed so that's awesome the dead piece at the back um and this is where the other branch has been swallowed up and i just think it looks so gross but cool yeah so you're looking at this is the f going to be the front like this this is our apex um and this one day will be cut way way down 
so this tree has got a very very long way to go very long way to go um but it is already so cool and i'm so happy with it um so let me get this potted up Um, so yeah, my phone just died then, uh, and I noticed it was kind of sliding as well. So what I've done is I filled it with a mixture of um, compost, bonsai mix, some akadama, and just some like river stones and sand and things like that, just as a mixture. So that's what I did there. You couldn't see it very well because the camera was sliding down. Um, so now we're going to cover the top with moss. Guys, here's the the Deathly Hallows um, Yamadori ash tree that we um, have just dug up, repotted, given a new lease of life. Um, it's finally appreciated, and it can live a wonderful life with me. Um, I'm quite proud of this. Um, I need you to bear in mind that this isn't a finished tree, and there's a long, long way for this tree to go yet. Um, I've kept my options open as far as design, so there's definitely a lot going on there that, that won't be in the future. If you would like to see a video of me um, hollowing out the, or hallowing out, whatever you want to say, um, if you'd like to see a video of me hollowing out the inside of this tree and, and really, really detailing it and, and getting it ready for the spring, I need you to like and drop a comment as well, or just let me know. Just let me know that you're watching, let me know that you like it, don't like it, whatever. If you aren't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel because um, we've got more stuff like this coming up and we've got a trip to um, Herons in June as well. So make sure that you don't miss that by subscribing. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and wherever you are in the world, take care of yourselves uh, morning, afternoon or evening and um, I'll catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.